What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion over 40 years of experience comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. Today, we're evaluating a comic book for conservation. This is not an especially valuable book, but it's important to the owner, and I thought it would be a good change to work on a modern book, which, after all, is probably the bulk of most people's collections. It's Power Man and Iron Fist number 73, the Rom crossover, which is the first meeting of Rom and Power Man and Iron Fist. Published by Marvel Comics September of 1981, it's got a great Frank Miller cover. Rom is one of the main comic collecting interests of friend of the channel Mike Mikulowski, or Hugo Danner as you may know him from his YouTube handle. Mike asked me to have a look at this newsstand copy and see what I thought we could do with it and I thought it would be a good project to demonstrate how our conservation techniques can be applied to modern books. When we start conservation projects, we always use my nine-step process, and that starts with assessment and documentation. So let's jump right into it. Quick assessment is, it's a pretty nice-looking book, and it would probably grade between a 7 and an 8 in that range with the exception of one pretty significant flaw which is going to hold the book back quite a bit. And that's this stain that we can see right here on the upper left of the cover. So let's investigate this a little deeper. I want to look at that stain from the inside and see just how bad it is. And it's pretty significant. This is the kind of stain that is going to definitely make CGC greater notes. It's going to hold the book back. It's obvious to anybody looking at the cover, and it's even more obvious if you look at the interior of the cover. Of note, we don't have a corresponding stain to speak of on the interior pages here, so something we don't have to worry about. The page quality is otherwise very nice, pretty much white. Let's see if we have the same stain on the back, and we do. In fact, it's worse on the back. Not only is it larger and darker, but it's more obvious because we have a larger white gutter on the back. So let's do the same thing. Let's look on the inside here. And we'll note it's pretty obvious on the inside here, about the same as the back, I think. Of note here, though, look at the interior wraps. They're not stained. It's really just the cover. Let's have a look at the page quality with the Overstreet whiteness card, the owl card. Like I said, it's not quite as brilliant white as the white here, but it's lighter than off-white. So I'm going to call it white. Even on the edges where it tends to tan a little bit, this book really doesn't look tanned from center to edges much at all. I'll do just a real quick look at the interior paper. It's about the same as the edge. So a very white book other than this stain. Now this book does have some soiling. It's most obvious on the back where you have a lot of white space. And that's pretty typical. Let's look at some stills. Here's the front. And again, it presents pretty well at arm's length. But there is some soiling on both the front and back, and we have some spine ticks that are especially obvious here on the front in these covered areas. So let's just have a closer look here. We have some color breaking spine ticks one, two, three, maybe four. These are going to hold the book back from the highest possible grades. And of course, at the moment, we have this stain which is really going to pull a whole point or two out of the grade. When we look at the back, that soiling is a bit more obvious on the stills. And again, you see that stain. So I think we have a book here that today grades out in the 5.0 to 6.0 range, depending upon how hard you want to hit it for the stains. But after we fix all of the addressable defects, it has potential to grade in the 7.0 to 8.0 range. Here's all that soiling. Again, these stills in close-up just show it off much better. This is cleanable. This is dry cleanable. So we'll show you that process. 
And then this stain is not going to be something we can dry clean, but it is going to be something we can most likely wet clean and mitigate. So here's our overall conservation plan. First, step one is always preparation. Assess the book, document the state of the book. We're completing that right now. Step two is going to be dry cleaning. This is moderately soiled. This is probably a, something that's going to take me about a half hour to dry clean. Then we'll disassemble the book so that we can wet clean and deacidify the cover. If normal wet cleaning isn't sufficient to get rid of the stain, we'll move on to stain mitigation, which might be more extensive than our standard wet clean. Of course, once we're successful with that, or we feel that we've taken it as far as we can with our skills and materials that we have, then we'll move on to drying, reassembly, and final press. Of course, no project is complete until we document all of the work that we did, so that's our plan. I sincerely appreciate you joining me today for the first episode of this modern comic book conservation project. Next episode, we'll start dry cleaning since many of you have asked for some dry cleaning content on the channel. This book is moderately soiled, so there will be plenty of dry cleaning to do. Then we'll move on to disassembly, wet cleaning, stain removal, and of course, reassembly. Most of the materials I will use for this project are available from Amazon and the affiliate links in the video description if you need any of them for your own conservation efforts. And if you enjoyed this video, please take a few seconds to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you want more comic book conservation content, check out our Facebook group, the Comic Book Conservation Community. Until next time, take care of one another.